Welcome to archery education. We're going to discuss FOC. First, let's start from the flight perspective of an arrow. An arrow travels about its center of gravity. That's important because the farther that center of gravity is forward, your moment arm relative to your broadhead will be shorter relative to the fletchings. If this is your center of gravity, your fletchings with a bigger moment arm can correct misalignment of flight of a broadhead much better if you have more front of center. And that's, that's kind of really the biggest advantage in flight to weight forward of an arrow. That doesn't mean you can add a bunch of weight forward and correct crappy arrow flight. There is diminishing return there of how much deviation fletchings can correct. The other issue is, is it doesn't correct perfectly and come back to center. It'll always overshoot. So you'll have a shaft that'll be going through the air going like this, and then it'll slowly peter out and straighten itself. That's what you don't want. You want that arrow coming out straight so that the fletchings don't have to do that. And the only thing you want the fletchings for is if you torque the bow a little bit and it's coming out just a little slightly off, the fletchings will save you. Why do we care about this? Well, weight forward is going to help us steer the broadhead. So that could allow us to use a smaller vein with the same broadhead we're using before, which might actually give us more front of center or weight forward. So there is numerous factors here to consider. Maybe I don't need to do a four fletch. Maybe I can use a three fletch because I have more weight forward of the shaft. So now for the topic that I'm sure everyone has tuned in to see here, penetration at a target. Now there's two things we're going to consider here. The first is that an arrow does not hit perfectly square to a target. Because it's traveling in an arc, there'll always be a little difference between this tip and where the center of gravity wanted to go. So there's going to be some portion of our momentum and our energy that wants to kick that arrow down after it hits our target, it's going to drop just a little. The shorter the distance from our center of gravity to our broadhead, as well as the faster the arrow goes, the less this distance will be. Because with arrow speed, you get a flatter trajectory, so that means less of an arc, it'll be more straight. And with more front of center, there's less of a distance here to worry about, and so the drop isn't as much. If you imagine a curve, the farther I get out on that curve, the greater that distance becomes. But as I shorten that, that distance gets less. Now let's get into what I briefly mentioned in the last video, which was column buckling. To describe that or help us understand it, we're gonna use a pool noodle. And we're gonna assume that this is our arrow. So how much force can our column withstand giving different weight forwards? Essentially what we do is we shorten based on where our center of gravity is, what is acting as our column. This is an appropriate approximation when this arrow is flying through the air. Its momentum vector and energy is considered to be carried about its center of gravity. So when it hits an object, the resistive force is now applied through this portion of the shaft. Now, because the counteracting force to that is the momentum vector, which is, a, which is creating this resistive force, the area between these two forces would be this. Now, we're gonna consider that the broad head is fixing the front of the shaft to the animal. So it's allowed to pivot relative to this point, but it can't translate. So to give us a general idea, this is how we're gonna approach it. So we'll assign our column length to be the distance between the tip of the broad head and the center of gravity. Now, this is a physical length, so this depends on our total length of our arrow, our FOC, and our broad head type. So from this, we determine some critical loads based on different shaft lengths, different spines, and different front of center percentages. We get some interesting numbers from this, and we're gonna compare those to an estimated impact force from our previous video using the Poncelet equation. To get that initial impact force, what we're gonna assume is that it was a linear regression of force. And from that, we can find our initial force when the arrow hit the target. From this, we estimated our impact forces at 20, 40, and 60 yards. The first arrow was a 364 grain, 229 feet per second at 20 yards, had a 60.5 pounds of impact resistance force. 40 yards, it dropped to 58.8. 60 yards, it dropped to 57.2. 
if it was a 28 inch arrow comparing 350 spine, 300 spine, and 250 spine at various FOC percentages, what would we require to prevent buckling at 20 yards? So we need something to withstand 60.5 pounds of force. This would put us either in an FOC of greater than 15% for a 350 spine or any 250 spine shaft or a 300 spine shaft greater than 12% FOC. And these are all assuming the arrow is still 28 inches in total length. Hitting a major bone would create a much larger impact force than the initial impact of the height of the animal. There's a couple things that we can do to reduce the impact force. The first, a sharper broadhead. The second, a smaller profiled broadhead or one that has a large slope angle. The third would be to reduce our impact velocity will reduce our impact force. And then the question is, so what increases the initial impact force? Hitting bones or other strong and dense materials, dull broadheads or broadheads that are poorly designed, or an increase in impact velocity. So now, let's do a little experiment. We've got our arrow, put the broadhead in. Let's see at different lengths here of FOC, and I'm simply gonna hold the arrow and apply a force into a scale and determine at what point does the column fail in force? And then the next thing we wanna see is how much force can I continue to generate after the column has failed? Turn on our scale, make sure it's zero to zero and it is in pounds. All right, here we go. Well, like I saw eight pounds before it failed, now I'm at 4.2. Trying to turn the noodle back to square to see how much force I can put into it. Uh, it's hard to get much over four. A maximum of over six, and then it dropped to about four, and I was able to roughly maintain that. Let's shorten our column by a dramatic amount. Here we go. Push in, push in, push in. Oh, I broke the scale. Same noodle. I've doubled the amount of force that it can withstand by roughly having the length. Now, the big thing that's important here is when the column fails, we're applying our force and it fails, I could no longer, as hard as I try, get back to that maximum. My thought is, is this is what's happening with our penetration number. So you hit, if the column can't withstand the impact force, it must slow down the arrow to a point to where it can withstand the force. Everything that the column cannot withstand, the energy must be exerted as a moment to the shaft, which is gonna cause vibrations, gonna cause that shaft to buckle in some direction. Another interesting thought that comes from this is, let's say you half hit a rib and that column wants to buckle. It's actually much easier for a column to buckle. If I have square, it's damn near impossible. And I'm pushing as hard as I can. For me, to cause this little short column to fail, but if it's off center, it's easy. These are just some of the factors that we need to consider here. With this front column, we need it stiff. And that's the important thing. It's not necessarily that we need a bunch of weight up here. We need a decent amount of weight forward, but we want this front part of the column stiff. Other things we could do to stiffen up the front of our arrow is changing the material properties of the front of the arrow. For example, running a collar system like these day six shafts here. First couple inches of this shaft basically are impossible to bend. These are all steel. You could also run something like fire knock cells, which is an internal carbon fiber shaft that are actually quite light, 26 grains roughly for some of the lighter versions that would almost double the stiffness of the front of your shaft without adding a ton of weight forward. So there are other things that we should consider to look at in terms of stiffening the front of the shaft that doesn't involve adding a bunch of mass to the arrow such that the arrow can withstand more of an impact force without the loss of velocity. The point of this, I guess, is FOC as we know it, we think about adding weight to the front of the arrow. And that's true to an extent. We need enough weight forward for flight properties However, once we hit the target, the more important factor is the stiffness of that column. If we can improve that stiffness while having a reasonable FOC value, that could be the better performing arrow.
These videos aren't meant to be be all end all videos. This is just a conversation of various things that you should consider when looking at arrows and arrow builds. And I think FOC and front of shaft stiffness are very important qualities. I'd just like to take a moment to thank everyone for watching these videos. I've enjoyed making them. I hope they've been to some benefit to everyone on here. I love the comments. Please keep them coming. Any questions you have, I'd love to answer them. The next video we're going to look at drop time of an animal. So tune in next time. Thank you guys. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. Keep your comments coming. Uh, I'd love to chat with you. All right. Till next time.